In this video, I'm going to give you three essential tips for effectively glazing with your watercolours. So if you don't know what glazing is, it simply means to lay one colour over another colour so that the first colour shows through. There are many reasons to do this, to adjust the amount of light and dark, to change a colour, or actually just to make an area look more solid because if you've ever got something that looks a little bit wishy-washy and it should be, you know, you're painting a solid object, glazing will always make it look a little bit more substantial. So let's point the camera downwards and learn how to do it properly. So my first tip for glazing, this one's really important, is you want to be using staining colours. So I'm going to show you a swatch that I made for another YouTube video last week. And what I've got here is I have some bright orange and I've overlaid it with blue. So the orange was too bright and I wanted to knock it back. So here I used phthalo blue, which is a transparent staining pigment. And here I used ultramarine, which is a very granulating pigment. Can you see the difference? So this one has gone on lovely and clean and clear. This one here has dried unevenly because of those granular pigments. Now, of course, there might be occasions where you want that texture, but more often than not, you don't want that top layer to be particularly noticeable. You just want to build up and adjust your underneath color. And so you want to be using a staining color like this one. Let me show you the difference between them if I swatch them. So here's the phthalo blue that I used for this one. Of course, I watered it down a lot. But it's a very bright clear pigment. For this one I used some ultramarine and it's a much more granular pigment. It has heavy granulation which means that it has heavier pigments that will form speckles as it dries. You also want to avoid the semi-opaque pigments. So here we have a transparent yellow by Winsor & Newton whereas here we have a Naples yellow deep again by Winsor & Newton. If I put it close look at the black line can you see how this one is much clearer and this one is semi covered up? So when it comes to layering watercolors and glazing on top of other colors, you want to avoid the semi opaques and you want to avoid the granulating colors and stick to these clear staining colors that are not going to distract from anything you've got going on underneath. They're just going to put a layer of color on top. So my next tip is always to be aware of color combinations. Because watercolor is transparent, and I've already advised you to use quite transparent colors for glazing, one color is going to affect another color. So they're both going to mix together visually on the paper, although they may be layered, and you're going to get the same combination of color that you would if you mix them together in a palette. So here I've got some blue, but if I go on top with some diarylide yellow, obviously I'm going to get green. Let's take it outside there so you can see it. So this is important. You may have a blue like this and think, well, I just want to warm it up a bit. But putting yellow on top of it is going to turn it green. Likewise, you can use the color opposite of the color that you're going on top of if you want to dull something down. So here I've got some orange. That's the opposite color to blue. So when we put it on top, let's try not to go too strong with it. What should happen is we should dull our blue down. Of course, if I take pink on top, I'll get purple. Now, because when I'm painting, I always try my colors out on scraps of paper. I've usually got a little bit of that color sitting on a scrap of paper somewhere. This means that when it comes to glazing, I don't have to guess what it's going to look like because I've got a little bit of that color already dried and tried out. I can just put the glaze on top on my scrap of paper and see what it does before I put it on the main painting. And if you haven't done that, it's worth actually painting that original color on a scrap of paper, allowing it to dry for a few minutes and then placing your glaze over the top, just so that you can see what's going to happen to that initial color. If you are enjoying this video, can I ask you to do me a quick favor? Can you please click that like button, that thumbs up button? If you like, share, subscribe, or leave me a comment here on YouTube, all of these things are free. It will help my channel to grow and I can teach more people like you how to paint and draw. So my next tip is to work from light areas first when you're glazing on top. Now with the best will of the world and a delicate touch, strong color like this is going to disturb when you put a color on top. Not much, but a little bit. So if I want to lay another color over the top of this first color, what I don't want is all of this pigment up here migrating down into this light area here. So if I mix up my glaze and I start up here and I work down, what I'm gonna find is I'm also gonna bring down a lot of this orange red color is going to end up down here but I don't want that on my petal I want to maintain this idea of the light area going up darker so I've got a little bit of transparent pink here 
I'm going to apply it, but I'm not going to start up here. I'm going to start down the light end. So we start down here and we're going to work up. I'm going to go up evenly as if I were applying a flat wash and I'm not going to come back down because I'm almost certain to have picked up some of this darker colour on my paintbrush. There's a bit of a puddle up here. I want to get rid of that. So I'm going to dry my brush and then just dab a little bit and that will lift that excess off of the paper. In this way, we've made a stronger, deeper petal. It's now pink as well as orange. And we've maintained that original idea of it being lighter down here and darker up here. Do you see something else that's happened? We've also smoothed out the application a little bit. There were a few lines in that original application. They've now almost completely disappeared. And this is another way to use glazing. If you've done something like a sky, it's not as smooth as you would like it to be. If you put another layer of color on, or even just clean water, that second layer can help to smooth out the first layer. I think this petal looks really quite pretty now. Thank you so much for watching this three essential tips video. Before you leave this video, don't forget to have a look in the video description. I've got lots of free stuff down there for you. I've got free downloadable PDFs with art tips on. I've even got a free watercolor painting mini course that you can take. Don't forget to subscribe to see more videos like this one. And you can watch another one of my videos right now.